Hey everybody, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. And if you guys like making money, if you wanna be part of a community, if you want to contribute, or you just wanna to listen to the videos about commodities and other undervalued sectors, this is the channel for you. Click subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you like this content. So I was kind of thinking about this next bull market and I've read some comments and they said, you know what? I think the most difficult part is going to be to hold it. And I agree. I, the most difficult part for me when I was a younger investor was to buy this stuff. You buy it cheap. You see your gains go up. And then you, you don't want to see those gains evaporate in front of your eyes. And you're going to have to really understand the value. You're going to have to understand uh, market conditions to know when to sell. And if you're going to be holding this for five to 10 years, you're going to have to endure some, some pullbacks. So what I did is I looked at history. I have Rio Tinto and SM Energy. Uh, I own both of these companies. I think they're good representations uh, of the last commodity bull market because they both existed. And I wanted to see what kind of declines they had and how many they had during that bull market. What, do, what exactly do we have to endure between now and the blow off top? Like, what does that look like? How, how, how strong do our hands have to be on these shares? And I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over Rio Tinto and SM Energy to, to show you how strong your, your, your stranglehold over your shares has to be during this bull market. So I have it in, in Microsoft Excel here. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. So here, here's the date, the open, high, close. And what I did is I looked at some of these and I looked kind of at a, at a near-term high. And then I looked at a near-term low and I said, well... The decline is going to be roughly X or Y or Z or whatever. So I've got the chart over here. This is the price chart of Rio Tinto's price. This is what I'm looking at. I'm going from 97 all the way to 2008. And this was the ultimate top right here. So what does this look like? How many declines do we have to go through? And what do those declines look like? So this was kind of in the beginning. I put this decline here. This was a 13% decline coming through here. But uh, this, so I'll, I consider this kind of the beginning of the bull market down here. Right here is the bottom. Um, we had a 35% decline from, from this guy right here. So it's a 35% decline. We mark this as the bottom. This is where we want to be cost averaging in back in 1998. And this is where I, you know, would cost average in and start buying. This is where the uh, commodity to S&P 500 ratio that ratio was flashing a buy for commodities in 1998. So we would have been buying around this area in the $4, $3, $4 range for this basically entire year. Now, I'm showing you this is a month-to-month -month, uh, chart here. This is month-to-month, -month, and these are the, the average prices, adjusted close of that month. So from if we started buying in 98 in, in May, we would have had a about a 35% decline in that period. And I would have said, just cost average in. Now you're down 35% in your account. You're going, damn it, I'm down 35%. Well, let's just keep going forward and seeing what the prices do from a month to month basis. So we're coming down and we hit a $6 price right here. You're feeling pretty good. You're up about 100% in, in price from the bottom. This is 3.3 to $6. But the next month it declines 14%. You're like, damn it, man, it's coming back down. But no, let's have strong hands. Let's cost average. The best thing to do is to cost average in. And so we go back up. We come back and we go to $8.73. So we're moving on up. And then we get a pullback, a 36% decline pullback from $8.70 to $5.57. So we have, that's, that's a pretty pretty big chunk of a decline. If you Let's say you put in 10 grand and you went all the way up. And, and let's say you almost tripled your money. So you're at $30,000 and all of a sudden 10 grand gets erased or more. That's a big hit. That is a big hit. And you're going to have to live through this decline if you want to go the distance and, and get the big move. So I, I put in here, there's a lot of sideways movement after this decline. Uh, then it went, it ran up into the 792 range right here. And we had another decline of a 20% decline after that $8, this run up to eight bucks. So we had a 20% decline here. 
Then all of a sudden it starts heating up even more. It starts coming up, coming up. We're in the $8 now. We're going to the $9. Now we're in the 10. Now we're in the 11s. You know, you're feeling pretty good here. You've got a three, 400% gain uh, from these 11s here. But then you hit a 970, it's an 18% decline. So you're coming up from this decline, up, 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 up. Now you're in the 1553. From our three, $4 purchase, you're up quite a bit, you know, five times your money, four times your money. Uh, you're, you're feeling really good. You got a, a pretty large account now. And bam, you get hit down to a 13, which is another 15% decline. Not too bad. I mean, 15% in a uranium company, that's like on a daily basis. But I'm just telling you, you're, you're going to get hit. Now, all of a sudden, it starts taking off even more. 13s, 14s, 15s, 18s, 20, 23. It's like, holy crap, I bought this thing at three, three, four dollars. <laughs> we're getting into some big money here. We're coming up. Bam, you hit a decline. 24, you know, 2571 down to 2196 is a 14, you know, 15% decline. You're like, all right. Then it takes the big blow off top, basically. It just runs. This is cheetah mode now. 25, 26, 28, 34. Coming up 35. Pulls back to 32 a little bit. 40, 44, 55. And we go all the way up to the peak of 58, 93. That was the peak. I doubt we could hit the peak in terms of selling. You probably sell these next couple months afterwards. Uh, but we had a sell signal. We'd be, we'd be watching for a top in this area. Uh, the sell signal was thrown in the housing starts. It was thrown in the commodity to S&P 500 ratio. We've got an expensive price in copper at that time. And it was, it was very expensive. We had all the indicators saying it was expensive in 08. We would have been looking for an exit in the 50s. High 40s to, to $58 is probably somewhere in that range. So we would have we would have gone from three, four dollars and done a done over a 10 to you know, maybe a 10 bagger, 12 bagger uh return. That's a pretty dang re good return. But you go back, there was a few declines. There was one here, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, seven declines that you have to go through during that time frame that were greater than 10%, which isn't too bad. That's not too bad. Now, what about SM Energy? SM, I'm, I'm very interested in SM. Uh, I like SM very much. So I, I, these, I put the greens and then the reds. This is the top. This is the bottom. Uh, this was in 98. So 97 to 98, you had to endure this, this going down period. We had a uh, bottom down here in 98 all the way to 2008 this is what the price chart looks like and when we're looking through here these are the declines and these are much larger declines at the beginning in between 97 and 98 we had a 63 percent decline during that year that was our our bottom here this was a bottoming process in 98 this is when the s p uh, 500 to commodity ratio threw a buy for commodities and the bottom was right here at 375 now, in one month, usually in some of these small uh, small cap companies, they have this initial surge upward, and we saw that in SM this past um, this past bottoming process as well. In one month, it went almost a hundred percent. I mean, it went up a substantial amount, maybe seventy five, whatever percent. Then it pulled back a thirty four percent decline. This is that that first initial surge. It pulls back, and then we blow higher. So this is kind of where the start was, was 2199, I would say, was like the bottom of the bottom, almost. Not This was the bottom of the bottom of price as well. So we, we, we could have went in and cost averaged in in this area in 98. We would have gone 34% down. We should have been cost averaging in. We would have been getting shares in the $3, $4, $3 range down here. Then it pulls up to 6 bucks, then a 20% decline. This is in 99. Then we pull all the way up to 970, 28% decline in, in July 1st, 2000. Then we pull up to 15 bucks. We're moving. I mean, we were in the three, $4 range. We're already up five times our money, four times our money, something like that. Then it pulls back 52% from 2000 to 2001. Now, how many of you would have sold out with a 52% decline? You would have been up three, three, four times your money 
and then and then got it cut in half. Not many people, I think, would be holding on. I would. Now I am. Then from seven goes to eleven. Get another fourteen percent decline. From nine sixty, we start going in this nice kind of even bull market going up, all the way to forty one dollars in two thousand six. Forty one dollars from three four bucks. That is a ten bagger right there. Ten bagger. So then we get this nice sideways decline a little bit. It went down twenty three percent in this sideways movement for almost. It was it was a little over a year, year and a half sideways movement. Then at the end, you get this blow off top from thirty one to sixty one dollars. That was the peak price in June two thousand eight. Nice big peak move. And then it just crashes afterwards. So this would have thrown the red signal in two thousand eight. We would have been looking to exit somewhere in this forty eight sixty one dollar range. And that was all from a price of three, four dollars. Now, how many times we have got one, two, three, four, five, six? I'd say six times that you'd have to endure a decline. The other one I think was seven. So we got to have strong hands here. You got to know the valuations, you got to know the market conditions because. I think the majority of people, if you don't know the value, are going to get, they're going to get shook out of here. They're, they're, they're not going to hold all the way. And when you're going through this, this, this bull market, everything that you want to be in is going up. So it's not like you can sell this highly desirable, or maybe you think it's less desirable, this stock, and just pop into something else because everything's going up. Sure, there could be maybe some better opportunities. But for me, if you're sitting on, I mean, at that point, if you're at ten uh, a ten plus bagger here, I mean, another doubles is going from a ten to a twenty bagger is a big deal. So that last double does matter quite a bit, and a lot of them they have these big blow off tops at the end, so you kind of have to stick around for it. That's when the sparks. I mean, that's when the that's when the portfolio really takes off. And from ten grand, a ten bagger is at a hundred thousand dollars. If it only does it in a year, you go from one hundred grand to two hundred thousand dollars, and it can do it very quick. So it's hard to time these things perfectly. So this is what it's going to take to hold the power to hold through this next bull market. You're going to see six, seven declines throughout this bull market. Are you ready to hold? Let me know in the comments section if you guys can hold through this next bull market in its entirety, or are you going to get up five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred percent, and then probably sell out? Uh, I'm holding through it. I've had a very easy hold on SM Energy. I'm up 800, 850%, maybe even more now. I didn't check the portfolio. I didn't want to look at it today. Uh, but it's it's been going up very well, uh, and I'm still holding on. I'm holding on for this bull market. I think we had an extreme bottom in October, November timeframe for oil companies, and most of them were priced to go bankrupt. So I jumped in there. I picked a couple up. I've got MCF. I've got SM Energy. Uh, I picked up CPE based off a subscriber um, talking about it. I think that was a great pick. Uh, I also own, I own, well, originally I owned QEP, but they got bought out by Diamondback Energy. So I own that as well. GTE was way down there. I think we got a really good price at like 30, 30 something cents. That was very good. Uh, Tellurian, we got that one really cheap. Way to go, team. Yeah, <laughs> that one's good. And then, uh, there was, oh, man, I'm, I'm forgetting one or two other ones. Uh, Tetra Technologies I got for 50 cents. That one was pretty good buy there. Uh, but there's some other ones that 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 the, that the uh, channel holds that were subscriber picks that I thought were pretty good picks. If you guys like this content, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this bull market coming up and if you can hold through this entirety of the next bull market. Or are you going to sell out? When you get to five, six, seven, eight hundred percent. Let me know in the comments section. Thank you for listening. This is finding value.